say this, Miss B, positively, Miss B, coming to you with my friend, my buddy, my pal, my son, Chris Allen, Issues of Men. Hey, Chris. Good evening. How you feeling? This? How you feeling tonight? I'm excited to see you. It's our time, baby. This is our date night. How about that? <laughs> That's what, what we do. Hey, Chris. Uh, let me, I'm uh, going to mute Chris out while he gets his audio together. If he has more than one yeah, device on, it could be the feedback. I, um, but um, are you okay now? Did you get the other? Perfect. Okay. And case is your first time joining us. Chris has been with us for a minute, as they say. And uh, Chris, before we move forward, would you tell them a little bit about yourself and what Issues of Men is all about? Oh, absolutely. Uh, first, let me uh, break into, um, <clears throat> I'm an author, uh, publisher, and um, I mean, there's many more things that I have to cover, but those are most in two that are most entwined to what we're doing now. And I'm also a mentor. Um, and you know, you can read, you can find all information about me at www.authorchrisallen.com. Um, I've written three books. Uh, you find out all information there, uh, information about my notary company on the dotted line services and, uh, information about my publishing company as well. And, uh, in regards to the IOM, the issues of men, um, <clears throat> this on this platform, this is what we talk about, um, topics that men are experiencing, but we may not always be willing to admit or address openly. And, um, and that's a wide range of things that, you know, sometimes, you know, we when uh, we were raised to, you know, we got to bear it alone. We got to keep, keep it inside. Can't bring it out, but this is the platform we do those things at. Okay. Well, that was short and sweet. Well, in case it's your first time joining us, I'm Miss B, positively Miss B, the CEO of Storm Talk 365 Radio, which is a faith-based podcast network. And we carry uh, such interviews such as this. I have guests um, on my show, some once a month, twice a month. But Chris has been with me for a while, and he comes on every Wednesday at 7 p.m. East Coast time with his topic. I'm also the CEO of Storm Radio 24-7, where we talk about arts, business, entertainment, and more. And tonight, Chris, what's our topic? Uh, tonight, Miss B, we are talking about avoidance and avoidance behaviors. And, you know, to be perfectly honest, Miss B, um, you know, when we talk about avoidance and avoidance behavior, um, especially it came to my life, avoidance was something that um, it never brought me any, it was a temporary solution. It was, it was temporary peace, but it wasn't long-term because the issue was still there. I had to deal with whatever that issue was. And, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you, you have to deal with it. That's, that's the only healthy way in or out of it. Um, and you know, when I put the information out there, let me I'll just share this with you real quick. Uh, so I said avoidance is the act of keeping away from not doing something or trying to not face an uncomfortable outcome or situation. And, uh, many of us use this on a daily basis. Um, but avoidance, um, in my opinion, it has never solved or brand closure to any situation in our lives. Um, do you agree? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I agree. And, yeah. And avoidance is, um, you know, um, I, I just always found myself, especially as a, um, I would just say I, I was 50, 50 on that line. There were some things I dealt well with the other half. <laughs> uh, I'm ducking and dodging. <laughs> um. <laughs> Guess what? Just like in dodgeball, you can duck and dodge, but eventually that ball going to catch up with you. It's going to hit you. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's definitely going to hit you. And, you know, um, Miss B, uh, you know, uh, a lot of these behaviors, uh, especially with somebody who has anxiety or um, panic attacks, um, depression, or, you know, some, some people are just not mentally emotionally, emotionally strong enough not to really just deal with anything that's re anything remotely uncomfortable uh, to them. Mm, so, you sure you're not talking uh, about me? Come on, Chris. What, what, what's up with that? <laughs> 
but look, if I'm talking about you, I'm talking about me too. That shoe is fitting in his tight. What a world. <laughs> yes, I'm, I, I wear 12. I got on 11 a day. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, baby. <laughs> and, you know, um, it, avoidance is, um, just in my opinion, it, it's a Band-Aid, Miss B. Um, it's a Band-Aid to uh, open wound, a sore, something. Um, and it's leaking. And it's not going to heal until you properly take care of it and address it. Um, I was trying to think of something that people can relate to and be able to, you know, kind of tie that in with their own personal lives, you know, whether that's their business um, or personal lives, relationships. Um, so they definitely have to um, definitely have to address it because, you know, again, I keep reiterating this, but um, it really got me nowhere. It got me nothing. You know, where I might have thought I was being slick or just whatever. It, it just became a temporary delay from the inevitable. Um, and it actually gets to a point where, again, like I said before, like you are going to have to address it one way or the other. It's, um, um, there's no other choice but to face it. Do what you have to do. Um, and I would just say, you know, let's some examples right okay um let's talk about just a relation situationship situationship relationship situation no i like that situationships it's a yes. situation <laughs> yes <laughs> that's true <laughs> it's definitely that and when we talk about that you know um you know we lied about you know we were attracted to somebody else we lied about being in a relationship Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we fell in love with someone uh, that we don't really know how they feel or their behavior is not reciprocating the same as ours. So you're going to be in avoidance. Um, you want to break up with someone uh, really not knowing how to tell them. So you want to you may avoid that person. You may fall back, you may pull back. But a lot of times when they say avoid, like, you, you know, that person literally like probably ghosted somebody because they didn't want to, they didn't feel like dealing with that situation or circumstance or that consequence of those type of behaviors. Um, have you had any situation uh, where you have avoided in a relationship or vice versa? <laughs> Child, I'm 65 years old. Children avoid situations. It's a built-in defense mechanism. Now, I ain't trying to get all deep, you know, me and my sister super think I'm Christian type of person, but um, it's a built-in defense mechanism from infancy on. If you are uncomfortable with the situation, a lot of people just shut down or pretend that it's not happening, create a reality that's not theirs or whatever it is to give them a level of comfortability avoidance is something that again is a built-in uh defense mechanism now if you I, you ask me a specific question i'll just go to something recent um and and nothing deep but um i have a family situation that i'm concerned about somebody and so I avoided it because I didn't want to be the catalyst to make things worse. But what it has done is made me feel uncomfortable. It's working on my rest, it's working on my uh, concentration, is 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 you know putting me it had put me in a situation where it was faith versus fear. And so being a faith-based person, I realized that I was taking the brunt because I allowed, listen, people, I want you to understand this. I allowed myself to be concerned about things that I had control over. Did you hear what I'm saying? So yeah. avoidance is you don't want to deal with it. So what you're doing is hurting yourself while the person that you're avoiding or the situation that you're avoiding is going on with their life. What you're oh. doing is giving too much control over things or people over your life when not only does the uh, serenity prayer help you, but speak up, stand up. And be in control. So yes, I have 
And we always will have those situations, but how we deal with it determines whether we're a victim or victor. And I'm no longer a victim to that particular situation. I recognize that um, Satan uses our emotions against us and we react emotionally and then we write a check that we don't want to cash. So that is a part of our life. It's just how we deal with it that determines our outcome. Absolutely. And I definitely agree with you uh, in distant regards to that. Um, I've been in that situation one too many times and <clears throat> it just got to a point where I figured like, look, I have to take my power back. I have to become strong and and, and get, get this up off my back. I, I need to do what I need to do. I need to be more um, faithful. I need to be more um, vigilant and stand firm and stand strong in my beliefs, whether, um, you know, it doesn't matter who believes or not believe or just whatever that is, I have to be me. I have to be comfortable in me and my decisions and be accountable for them. And um, I just remember being in situations too where we might've had some roommates or, um, and everybody was responsible for a certain amount of rent, things of that nature, right? Um, and then you may have one roommate that has not addressed the fact that they may have lost a job. So now they're either, they're avoiding coming out and speaking about the situation. They're either leaving early in the morning, coming in late at night, you know, when they're thinking everybody's asleep. Um, they're not, they're no longer interacting. Um, um, they're no longer coming out of the room when everybody else is present. Um, and the issue was at the time they didn't, they might not have, but they might not have had the means to pay their rent, but instead of that individual person just coming out and saying, Hey, you know what? I need to speak to you. Um, I'm having these issues. I'm having these problems. Um, would someone be able to help or, you know, until I find a job or, can, you know, what, what can we do? to help out the situation. And that's whether we help the person look for a job or do something, we could have pulled together to make the situation better for everybody, as opposed to that person and their being and being in their heads, thinking the worst possible outcome, um, thinking that people are gonna look at them lesser or, um, you know, you can't handle your business or, and things of that nature, look, we all want a place to live, <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, the best interest of everybody, e even if you have to give them a tongue lash, you know, whatever that may be, or just a good conversation, a proactive conversation sometimes, just to let that person know this is not what this is. You know, you need to be more open and speak about these issues so that we can try to do something about it, be proactive about it. Uh, so that, but that's an example of, <clears throat> you know, avoidance. Um, and we spoke, you know, a little bit earlier about, you know, about the situation shift, you know, you want to get out of a relationship and by avoiding that, avoiding that person, that's going to make them more anxious and more eager to find out what's going on and try to figure out the question, what did I do wrong or what's what they're going to come after you even harder or worse because you didn't address it. Um, so either way, you know, um, it's almost like if you have a ball and you're trying to press it down into a pool of water, it always comes back up to the top, not unless the air goes out. But in that case, the more you try to force it, push it away, the more it's coming back. So it's one of the and you know what? you have to address it. I, I, I'm sorry, but you know, I, I'm, I'm older now and I got to do it when it's on my mind. Speaking of the letting the air out the ball, even when you let the air out the beach ball, it still floats. So what I'm saying is the issue is not going to go away. It's just changed form. It just changed uh, the level of identification. And so you have talked about this on your one of your previous episodes. That's another form of communication that's very necessary. But if you have a, a, a sense of insecurity or you want to... In other words, to, to be honest with you, if you use that rent person, that rent person was being deceitful. 
And he, that's why he can't face people because he knows his integrity is, is not where it needs to be. So mm -hmm. on that point, I just want to remind you all, he used the beach ball as an example. Even when you push all the air out, the problem still exists. It's just in a different form. And, you know, communication is very important. And so when he said that his topic tonight was going to be avoidance, um, that is a prime indicator that you have communication problems. Um, you have a low self-esteem. You're insecure about feeling um, that you're worth uh, defending yourself or calling people out for negativity. So I think that's very important. And using myself as an example, it only hurts yourself. Absolutely. It only comes back to you worse and worse and worse, where the person that you're either concerned about or the situation you're trying to deny is moved on and you're stuck, stagnant and stinking. <laughs> and stuck in that pig mud. <laughs> oh, that, that's an awful thing. I'm, I said that because, um, you know, as I grew up in the country uh, to some degree. and That um, pig mud. Mm -mm. That pig mud, nasty. <laughs> and you know, Mister, you talked about um, you know a lot of people when you say avoiding things, um, people avoid work, school, or social activities just in the fear that you know they're afraid that they are not going to fit in. They feel they're different. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can avoid in life. Um, but again, as we said, it's, it's just not, it's not good for you. Um, I would just say if, if you don't consistently try, how are you ever going to know or really find out if what's in your head or how you're feeling is really the truth? It may not be uh, what you think it is. So again, you just have to address your insecurities in that aspect of it. Mm. Um, and <laughs> earlier I was thinking, thinking of some examples that I could use this evening, like, you know, you, you can avoid having a car accident, Miss B. Um, you can avoid, um, you can avoid a person. That's, that's easy to do. Um, you can avoid getting into arguments, things of that nature, you know, yeah, you can do that. Um, you can avoid cleaning your house. <laughs> you could avoid paying your bills. But one thing that you cannot avoid, Miss B, is reality. Boom. But then again, Chris, who are we to say what reality is to somebody else? I'll get back to that later. But reality is what you believe it to be whether it's correct or not, but your reality is your reality. Even in avoidance, you create your own sense of reality. Just be careful what you're creating. Facts. And, you know, when you're in this space, when you're avoiding circumstances and situations, you're creating um, your own torment box. Like, you know, you're creating your own torment. So it's actually like, you know, you are actually pricking and cutting yourself. But it's just on a mental and emotional basis. And then it, it will affect you physically. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, you, you have to address it or it's going to address you at some times. Um, I just know that having that avoidance behavior is not healthy. Um, and if you're not able to sustain positive relationships um, by avoidance, um, not only do you damage people, you damage the relationship. Now, we can also flip that to um, a business relationship. If you created or you've done a service for somebody and that person thinks that service was satisfactory or you may be well, you could have done this better. Are you not going to address that circumstance or not going to uh, bring that, you know, talk to that customer to find out what the issue was and how you can fix it? If you don't address it, if you don't fix it, if you don't maintain it, 
not only on your personal relationship, your credibility, um, and it extends far, your family relationships, um, your business relationships, all these things are going to go against, it's going to hurt your character, uh, your credibility as an individual and as a person. Uh, so it can uh, really, having this avoidance behavior or thinking that it's gonna solve itself on its own miraculously, um, it's, it's, it's definitely not a good thing. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? You know, <clears throat> I try not to bring scriptures in on everything I do because I get so my nerves when people do that. But the Bible says, don't be anxious about nothing. Mm. So if you are avoiding situations you're making yourself anxious and worried about what if if you're dealing at what if then you've created a sense of fear what is fear false evidence that appears real what does fear do it creates a synergistic impact on your body it messes with your health it messes with your mental stability it messes with your level of communication and your relationships. So let's get back to that beach ball. Mm -hmm. You may change the configuration of the beach ball, but the beach ball is still there and it's not going away. Mm -hmm. So what Chris is telling you is, whether it's your personal relationships, whether it's professional, whatever, you need to address it. And we both have had uh, levels of communication with our business with our clients and customers. And we have two choices. If we think we've done a satisfactory job, but we're getting feedback that they may not be totally comfortable. If we don't address it, then just like on Yelp, you'll get a big old bunch of negative complaints based on something that could have been cleared up. And on the other hand, what about you as a professional, as an entrepreneur? You have the right to address customers who have mistreated you. They did not pay you on time, did not pay you all of it. Uh, they paid you, but yet um, they still complain. You need to address that. Don't just say, well, I did my part. No, your part is making sure that both parties are comfortable with the agreement or the services that are rendered. So avoidance is both personal, professional. And I have to say, um, it's also spiritual. Are you avoiding what the Bible tells you to do when you say you, that's what you believe in? So for those of you who are watching, regardless of what you're believing in, are you understanding that what you believe in should be stronger than what you're fearful of? And avoidance is a, a strong point of fear. So don't be fearful. Handle your business. Put your big girl underwear on, your big boy boots, step on up, fix it. Fix if it. not, Read the serenity prayer, which you can't do nothing about. Turn it over to God or leave it alone and keep it moving. Don't let people, situations and circumstances control you. You need to be in control. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I just had to go there. No, that's, listen, it, 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 it needs to be said. Um, another aspect of avoidance was, and again, I, I, was, I was guilty of it. When I say majorly, big time. Uh, since I was about nine years old, to deal with what I was going through um, of not having my biological father being a major part of my life, I masked a whole lot. People used to ask me, um, how was I able to get some of the stuff that I was able to get? You know, um, it was like, well, you know, you didn't act the scene like you were high or um, you know, um, abusing alcohol, things of that nature. It, it's, 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 it's not hard. It's not hard to do. Um, you know, especially, you know, if you come in a house, um, you know, you chew gum, you chew candy, uh, which can, that's another, you can mask your breath. Um, you know, you can just go directly to your room, chill out, hang out come home, get yourself cleaned up, you know, um, and I've, you know, I've used alcohol for years. 
because of the turmoil and the things that was going on inside of me. Uh, uh, like I said, I, I abused it for years. And I could imagine, you know, if somebody um, has a traumatic situation or something that they're dealing with that they can't seem to move forward or get away from. Um, you know, that's why there are so many um, addicts in the world or they have their way of dealing with it one way or the other. Um, and those issues need to be addressed in a different aspect as well. You, ha you really have to address those issues to come out of that space, that situation, um, because that also affects you financially. Um, and it also affects your friendships. Avoidance through substance abuse also determines how you live, what you can buy, um, and what you have access to. You may have horrible credit. You might you might can't be able to get a home. You might be able, not be able to get an apartment. Um, you know, um, even even the quality of food you buy. You know. Um, I know nowadays a lot of things have changed the quality of food and they, and they, I know they all come from, you know, um, manufacturers or ma manufacturers and certain companies and subsidiary companies and things like that. But, um, if you have the belief that certain quality of food from a certain store, you may not be able to go and get it from that store. You have to shop at the dollar store consistently all the time to get your food, which may be high in uh, impure products or things of that nature. So by not masking and using substance and having substance abuse does um, place a whole nother aspect of control in regards to your life um, and how you spend money and how certain things are carried out and done. So um, it's definitely something that needs to be addressed, um, you know, whatever that is, just have the courage to move forward and maybe talk to somebody or get counseling, get some help with it um, so that you can start moving in a better, in a positive direction. Ms. B, did you have anything that you wanted to say in regards to that? First, I would like to congratulate you on overcoming um, your dependency on substances. I also would like to commend you on your transparency and sincerity, because um, these videos are infinite and we have no clue who's going to look at them and how far in your future they'll be viewed. So you shared something that you didn't have to share. Um, my comments on that is for all of us, humanity, what you focus on, you give power to what you give power to controls you. What controls you impacts your emotions. Your emotions dictate your behavior. Your behavior creates situations and circumstances that have consequences. Your consequences are with you for life, whether they're good or bad. The devil doesn't make you do anything. He simply gives you an opportunity to, to choose right or wrong temptation it's not going it's not even to the temptation it's the point of he knows your heart's desire so he doesn't have to tempt you if you already want it you have to decide what you want to choose mm -hmm. and so chris has told us that he chose enough is enough whatever it is that you're avoiding substance abuse is a it's not a temptation it's a level of comfortability but it's false so I encourage you, whether it's a Pepsi Cola, a five pack, E and J, a joint, I don't care what it is, even sex, what it is that you're using to avoid your issues, um, is just making it worse and you're hurting yourself. So Chris mentioned without going into detail, he experienced some life choices, some life situations that encouraged him to seek comfort levels in substances. I'm here to encourage you. All of us are going through something now, especially now. And the farther we get away from more values in society, the farther we get away from depending on something spiritual. So my encouragement to you is before we go to break is no matter what it is that you're facing, you're not the only one. 
You're not the only one facing that issue, other issues, and even more issues. But that's not what I'm trying to tell you. Seek help. Avoidance on any level, especially starting in childhood. If your your parents are verbally abusing you, you avoid conversations with them. And then you go out in public and don't know how to have a regular relationship. But now you're 30 years old and can't understand why you can't have a normal relationship because you avoided the issues. Avoidance is not healthy. Google it. Look it up. Um, he gave you a definition at the beginning. Think about your behavior. What are you avoiding? What are you hiding? What are you in, in denial of? You can avoid having um, sex, but once you have unprotected sex, you can be denial thinking, no, I'm not pregnant. I know I'm not pregnant. And then three months later, I think I'm pregnant. Whatever you avoid is still going to come to surface, and then you're going to have to be responsible for it. And whatever you're getting ready to birth, it's not going to go away just because you don't want to accept it. So before we move forward, um, I would like to take a short break. But Chris, thank you for this part of um, Issues of Men. And when we come back, we'll continue with the rest of your uh, narrative, okay? All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Chris Allen and me, Miss B, right here on Issues of Men. This time we're talking about avoidance. Uh, before we move on, I want to let you know that that was a commercial for me, Miss B, positively, Miss B, your spiritual realist. I've been blessed to be a part of the Preach the Word Network every Friday morning at nine o'clock. Uh, I'm on Roku Fire. I'm on um, all major platforms for uh, television shows. I'm there local in Atlanta, Georgia. You can find me on the website at Preach the Word Network, 9 a.m. East Coast time. I am the spiritual realist. I simply give you scriptures, discuss them briefly, and ask if it's true, how's it working for you? So whatever it is you say you believe in, if it's true, how's it working for you? Uh, next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about um, what are your thoughts telling you? We're going to use scripture to help you to understand your thoughts, which is what Chris and are really talking about what are you thinking what are your thoughts what are they controlling your behavior so join me friday morning 9 a.m east coast time on preach the word network moving forward i'll be giving you a link to my youtube channel where i'll be uploading those episodes if you cannot catch them and that way you'll have the opportunity to, to see them on demand again that's miss b the spiritual realist every friday morning 9 a.m east coast time on preach the word network all right chris let's keep it rolling Keep it rolling. Um, for those who are stuck in avoidance or are consistently um, exhibiting this behavior, let me share something, um, share two things with you. Um, chapter two um, of my book, Open Wounds. In the beginning of chapter two, um, there's an excerpt that I give. And it says, drifting into the darkness I was so far from the light, all I could see was twilight. When you avoid situations, you avoid things, and you turn around and look how far you've gone and what you could have done, what you could have accomplished, um, that even adds more weight onto what you, you know, what you're experiencing now. It's going to compound it even more. But in this particular uh, excerpt that I was sharing is that I didn't know that I even drifted out that far. I was so far from my base. I was so far from who I was naturally in the beginning. I was so far from my teachings. Um, when I had a chance to turn around and look back, it, it was astounding to me. Like, I can't believe I let myself get this far, you know, and I had to work my way back. And again, that, that's a whole nother journey, but it was, I'm glad I was able to do it, uh, to be able to come out into the light again. Uh, cause again, it, it's a long journey. It's a way, but something that needs to be done. I also wanted to share with you, um, just to add on what I was expressing in regards to my abuse of, um, alcohol 
and um, I was addicted to sugar. So I'd be spending like five or $10 on sugar a day, you know, stuff like that that just kept me, um, it, it, it kept me going. And I produced an issue or a problem, you know, with my trying to maintain it and things of that nature. Um, but this poem that I'm gonna to read to you this evening is called My Vice. It, it says, uh, my vice became my strength, my crutch, my ally and my weakness. It deadened the exploding landmines and turbulence that shook me from within. It fought off crippling effects of depression with a depressant. Crushed by landslides of disappointment and pain, I became a slave to a liquid that drowned out my perceived reality in the form of bliss. Every day I repeated the same cycle with the precision of an atomic watch, filling my void with my vice. So everything that I had going on, I drank it away. I, I, I sugared it away. I candied it. I caked it away. <laughs> so I, I drank Coke, Pepsi, and Mountain Dew. I Mountain Dew it away. But it's always there. When you come down off your high or your rush or whatever that is, when you wake up the next day, it's still there. So address it. So that's what I wanted to share with you this evening. From my, from, from my book, Open Wounds. So, this is it right there. Check that new cover out, y'all. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, I definitely had to address that issue. So, I did that immediately. So, uh, now we're on a whole new path, a whole new light, and just moving forward with it. Um, so, Miss B, you know, I also wanted to say this, just talk about this, kind of get back to this relationship thing a little bit. We talk about, um, you know, when people get close sometimes to somebody, um, you may not feel worthy. You might not feel um, you deserve that person. That person is too good for me. And I know we spoke about this before, just some of those examples, right? Um, a person uses, they have this avoidant behavior um, again, you know, they pull away because they, they feel like, oh, my God, this is too close to comfort. Um, I really love this person. I'm not, I don't know how they really feel or um, they may not really feel that way about me. Uh, they're going to hurt me. So as opposed to communication is a big thing and communication will solve a lot of things for you first. So it's definitely important to communicate in that aspect to find out exactly where this person is at, what they're doing. Should you wait? Um, should you give them more time or just however it should go? The person may feel exactly how you feel. But with you being in your head and your avoided behavior, um, you know, again, you'll self-sabotage relationships uh, in a lot of areas of your life, um, you know, by maintaining and having that type of thought process, uh, emotional process. Um, again, you know, don't avoid them or not speak or call them or talk to them as often, uh, because you feel that, you know, you don't, you don't deserve it. And you feel whatever that is that you feel is again, it's not right because you're not only hurting yourself, you're also hurting that other person. Um, so Ms. B, um, let's talk about some ways that an individual person can avoid or get better at or practice um, simple ways to come about addressing their conflicts in life, coming out of that avoided space. Um, what, what would you recommend or tell someone who is in this place um, of avoidance? Funny you should ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it is a natural defense mechanism for everybody. Nobody's immune to avoidance, no matter how minor or major, it is still a method of self-defense. So on my personal videos, I would say, I don't feed you anything I don't eat. And I promise not to make this long, but I just want to tell you how I started. Regardless of what you believe in, what you don't believe in, I believe that my spiritual relationship has helped me to recognize my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
Chris has a shirt on the night. So I can. I can do all things. I can do all things. Yes. So what I'm trying to tell you is that I can do all things. Yeah. But I can do all things through Christ. The righteousness of Christ that dwells within me. I am not supposed to think I am superwoman uh, on my own, but I'm a super spiritual woman because the righteousness of Christ alerts me of my weaknesses. We talked about thoughts and communication. So my recommendation to you is if there's any um, interest in anything spiritual, I would start there. Live like you believe what you believe. If you believe the scriptures and find the scriptures, just like in the war room, that addresses your issues, whether it's communication, whether it's relationships, to give you the courage through Christ who strengthens you to address everything that's keeping you in bondage. Christ died to set us free, but we're allowing ourselves to wear shackles based on our emotional connections to persons and things. Where in reality, we have the power and authority to control everything. And we hurt ourselves by allowing ourselves to be controlled by the things that have no right in our life. So my recommendation to you is, whether you're a Buddhist, a crystal watcher, or cinnamon snorter, I don't care. That's not what I'm here for. But whatever it is that you believe in, it should be a higher power greater than you to direct you and to let you choose that path which is for me, let me just make that clear. I believe that Yeshua, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. The Holy Ghost is my comforter. My steps are ordered by my father, Abba Father. And that's me. And that has helped me for 65 years. That has helped me to address all of my avoidance issues, my insecurities, because there's a scripture out there, basic instructions before leaving earth to help us with everything that concerns us. Hmm. Definitely a good point. Um, <coughs> excuse me. What I would just say is that um, conflicts, situations are never going to go away in our lives. They're here. They're going to stay. Um, as much as you try to hide or divert or delay them, they're going to be waiting for you. So <laughs> the best thing for you to do is build up that confidence um uh be brave enough to confront your situations and your issues um and the only solution that's going to be to it again is to just address it um another way to come out of this space of avoidance is you know you have to forgive mm. you have to forgive you have to let go um, if you do not forgive or let go, not only are you going to be harboring um, these negative emotions, you're also going to reflect them on other people as well. So the cycle of hurt is going to continue. It's not It's not ever going to stop by avoiding, by having that avoided behavior. Um, we talked about this a lot this evening. We talked about communication. This is also a way that you can practice communicating. Um, you know, talk to someone, um, someone that's not a biased person, somebody that you trust, um, and really just talk to them. I would say, you know, uh, Miss B mentioned again, that spiritual connection, talk to God, um, talk to whoever you feel comfortable talking to. And, um, you know, that's what you do. Um, just like we're having a conversation, we're talking now, um, years ago i might not have felt comfortable enough to come out and talk about my situation of being transparent open and honest with people um but i also know that i know my transparency and my openness is also going to help other people i received the same help so it's important to also give them back give it back um being able to just analyze yourself as well sometimes you have to put yourself in a place to say you know what hey you know i'm too hard on myself i'm too this i'm too that um or look at the areas that you may have not had success in there's nothing wrong with trying again there's nothing wrong with 
saying, hey, you know, I, I need to get better in these areas. Um, just do some self introspection, do some self analysis and look back on some of the things that um, that may be weighting you or holding you down um, while you're avoiding. Um, I didn't get too much into it this evening, but let's talk about really quick before I go to my next thought. You talk about your physical features, right? I had some funny physical features, but I'm confident in who I am, my personality. I'm confident um, just, you know, just in who I am. I'm okay. Self-acceptance. Yes, I go on mute on that. Uh, excuse <laughs> me. I told him when I, he was, he been my friend list for a long time. Man, let me tell you, I love coming on once a week. I got some eye candy beside me. Yes, I do. He said he got funny features. He sure do. I'm laughing every Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I definitely appreciate it. But, you know, there may be like, you know, you may have stretch marks. Um, you may have been, you know, back in the day, you might have had muscle. Now you have a little bit of weight on. You got a belly or something like that. Listen, uh, you know, as we get older, our body does change. Um, it shouldn't make you less confident. Um, what it done for me as a, as a certain part, um, well, my daughter's had told me like, dad, like, yo, I'm not going to the store with you looking like that. Not saying I wasn't dressed nice. I just wasn't in the physical shape or the way I used to look because I kind of let myself go. Um, where, you know, my belly was hanging over my belt and I couldn't see my shoes, you know, my feet, stuff like that. So um, I knew from that point in time, I was like, wow, like, you know, I've kind of let myself go a little bit. I, wa um, I wasn't self-conscious, but I said I can work my way back to what I used to be as some semblance. And, and you could do the same. If I can do it, I know you can do it. So even if that means if you, you know, like, I'm going to take like, ah, my teeth, my teeth are shifting. Um, and I'm going to go back and get them fixed. I'm very self-conscious about that uh, for my teeth. I love my, I love my teeth. I love my smile, you know, but I just know that for the rest of my life, I don't want to, I don't want this to be, um, I want it to be what I want it to be. So I'm going to get that fixed. So again, um, having the avoidance you know when you're smiling you people putting their hands over their mouth all the time or you know they turn away from people when they talk and something like that there's a lot of things that you can do with yourself uh you know to help fix yourself but it's up to you i'm not going to keep i'm not going to do this you know what i mean i'm just not going to do that um sometimes you have to build up some boundaries and you know with people um just in regards to why are you avoiding them if you're not a no i don't think anybody should be confrontational but when i say you, you need to confront the issue that means addressing it that means taking that problem and that issue and finding a solution that's what i mean by that not in conflict that you need to go and, and hit somebody over the head and things like that if you choose to okay, okay. Yeah, you know but that's on you um that's not gonna be my first choice of action Put it that way. Um, and again, you know, just put yourself in a place where you'll be able to just be like, you know what? Um, I'm telling the truth and I, I need to address it. Um, and sometimes there has to be a period of where you have to address yourself, be comfortable with it, come to some place of acceptance and understand um, certain things about yourself. Um, aspects of your life and move through it. Um, Miss B's um, has a, a phrase, um, antonym that she uses, K-I-M, keep it moving. Don't stay stuck and sit in that seat uh, that you can't get up from because, you know, um, you just don't have that confidence. Everything that goes around you trying to avoid or delay it or not address it, it's not going to get you anywhere in life. Um, this is going to add more issues and problems as you move forward. Um, so with that said, Ms. B, um, if there's anything else that you would like to share, um, definitely do so. Um, if, I know we kind of gave our remarks and everything, so I, I kind of look at it like, you know, we set our final thoughts for this evening. But if there's anything new, any information that you want to share, um, um, you know, regards to any events, um, anybody you want to shout out, I definitely feel free to do so. 
Well, thank you. But I would like for you to mention the anthology that we're both a part of. Okay. Um, Miss B and I are a part of an anthology. Um, I can't pull the information up. And I, again, this is one of them nights. Uh, I, you know, that's something that I left upstairs, but we're part of an anthology. Um, the author uh, who put this together, um, who actually put all this stuff together, his name is Hakeem Gillum L. And um, he's a part of um, Agape um, Services. And, you know, he has an amazing book that's on Amazon right now. That um, it, when I say it's an amazing book, it's, it is an amazing book. It's an inspirational book. And, um, you know, you definitely need to go check that out. Uh, matter of fact, let me see if I can pull this up right now and I'll give you all some better information in regards to that because um, this gentleman is. He's he, he he is an amazing gentleman, um, and this book is act. I mean, it, it's a testament, in my opinion, to what we can do if we stay the course, um, not avoid, um, but take everything on, take everything head on, uh, as we feel and as we see it. Um, just give me one second, and I'm going to get this information for you right here. I could tell y'all where to go get it and everything. I'll tell you the name of the book. I'm smiling because Chris is an author. He knows better than that. <laughs> so yes, we it's Think and Grow Godly Rich and it can be found yes. on Amazon. And so he's going to pull it up to make sure I got it right. But I'm just excited to have been invited to be a part. Um, he was impressed with... Um, uh, think and Grow Rich, and he uh, wrote a, uh, I guess you guess a companion to that, um, but he used godly principles, and he uh, even used one of your best friends to contribute with it. Well, we just recently lost him, but uh, Think and Grow Godly Rich is just absolutely an amazing opportunity for you to sit down and think about kingdom principles and how to apply it to your life. It is not about just about finances, but godly rich means that um, not depending on man's resources, that the Father in heaven has given you an innate ability to make better choices for yourself. And what, uh, and as they say, the law of attraction in the world, but what you believe to be true becomes true. So if you believe you're going to be broke, you're going to stay broke. If you believe that you're rich and wealthy, um, my bank account may not match. Kobe Bryant's or Oprah Winfrey's, but in heaven, I have limited resources. So that's what I depend on. My faith is my currency. So that's Think and Grow Godly Rich by Hakeem Everett Gilliam. Um, that is the Amazon link uh, Chris just put up under uh, in the comments. So please give us all support, but more importantly, um, Brother Gilliam uh, for his uh, work. And he has a clothing line. He has uh, he does essential oils. He he has a lot going on. As a matter of fact, he's a poet and he just put some words to music on his YouTube channel. So again, he's got a lot going on. But those are the type of people that we align ourselves with. Kingdom minded, professional, working toward improving our level of professional and spiritual integrity. And Chris and I um, are very transparent. No, we're not perfect. But when it comes to avoidance, um, the only thing that I can say personally as we get ready to come to a close, um, I'm not isolative, I'm selective. And if that's avoiding, then that's what I do. I don't like negative energy. I don't care, relatives, family, friends, or foe. Um, I don't avoid you. I just decide whether or not I want to allow myself to be exposed to your behavior. There's a difference, um, whether it's a, personal relationship or professional relationship, I have a choice of what I want to allow myself to be exposed to. And if it's draining me, distracting me, not supporting me, then I'm not avoiding it. I just move on to something more positive. There's a difference. I've addressed the issue and I chose to handle it by eliminating my exposure or minimizing my level of communication. Um, and I have that right. It's my life. I have my 
choices to live it the way uh, I can control it to live. So if you want to say I'm avoiding you, okay. But in reality, I'm just moving on. Kim is my close friend. Keep it moving. I don't have to stay stagnant and stinking because I owe you nothing but to love you. Uh, but I do not allow you to control me on any level. If that's the way you want to roll, I'm just going to keep praying for your soul. Let me repeat that. If that's the way you want to roll, I'll continue to pray for your soul because I don't want to see anybody go to hell and I'm not going to let you go take me to hell with you because I'm allowing your behavior to impact my uh, perception of your control in my life. So, boo, you do you. <laughs> and I'm going to do Jesus. How about that? All right, everybody. This must be positive. Ms. B. Chris, is there anything else you want to say? Yeah, I just want to share uh, with everybody um, within the next two weeks or so, two weeks or so, um, I'm going to be sharing some things with you just in regards to uh, regards to the show. Um, and, you know, you guys will see that soon. But I did want to say that um, I had meant to put um, a post out about the uh, change in the show for a few months uh, is that Miss B and I are going to be on for the issues of men every um, first Wednesday and third Wednesday of the month for a couple of months. Um, and then we'll probably be back to rolling again um, every week um, as we had um, stated before. But, you know, we have some very important things going on in our lives and we need to address those things to keep things moving. And you're going to see the growth um and um you know you're truly going to be amazed in regards to this as well um so may 5th will be the first wednesday um for, ne for next month and we're gonna be talking about facing the truth living with the man in the mirror and for women, <gasps> it's going to be living with the woman in the mirror so that is my topic you would hear me talk about michael jackson let me tell you man in the mirror Look, I know it may be old, but y'all need to go back and listen to that because his words were not just for entertainment. He told stories in all of his music. But the man in the mirror, yeah, I've done a couple of my videos on that. So thank you. I love that. I'm sorry. You just excited me because I always say, have you looked in the mirror lately? Have you looked in the mirror lately? What is your reflection? What are you seeing? In other words, when you walk out the door, are you seeing what other people see in you? Are you avoiding it? How about that? And listen, um, and this is primarily uh, just a segue, even from tonight's conversation, avoidance. You can avoid a lot of things in life. You can avoid accidents. You can avoid people, bill collectors. <laughs> but guess what? At the end of the day, you cannot avoid yourself and you cannot avoid the reality but you have the ability to change. So we're going to talk a little bit about that next week with uh, on uh, May 5th, 7 p.m. here on Storm Talk Radio 365. And um, again, if you would, uh, if you'd like to provide a topic for the show, or if you'd like to be a guest on the show, contact me at the issues of men at gmail.com. Um, and we'll discuss a date um, that you'll be able to come on to the show. Um, also, if you would like to support the continued growth of our platforms, um, definitely go. Uh, you could cash app, uh, dollar sign, Ascension Services, um, or, and, not saying or, and um, support uh, Storm Talk 365 radio. That's hashtag Storm Talk. Um, so again, you know, we are open to receiving uh, donations and assistance uh, as we build and move forward on our platforms. And uh, again, we thank you for tuning in. Um, don't forget to join our YouTube pages um, and also join our Facebook pages as well for there's a lot of information that we have that's going out to you as well. So with that being said, we love you. Become the kings and queens sleeping inside of us. With that being said, uh, we love you. See you next, see you May 5th, Wednesday, 7 p.m. here. Stone Talk Radio 65, The Issues of Men. Y'all have a great evening. I'm loving that, but correction, and it's my bad. It's hashtag Cash App Storm Talk 365. Hashtag oh. Storm Talk 365. You want to send us some money, huh? You changed it on me. 
No, I, I, you know me, a typo. But anyway, oh, hashtag okay. Storm Talk three sixty five or Ascension Services if you want to um, support both ministries. Okay. Absolutely. All yeah, right, everybody. Thank, thank, you, so thank you so much. May fifth. That's right. I got to do without them every other week, but that I, I, I'll make it. All right, everybody. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye bye. <laughs>